All right, hello, wine drinking people. We are back. I thought it was finished there. But uh, we still got a couple events to make it through in the What I Drank Yesterday section. You know, last week we had a short week in terms of events open to the public. But Friday night, another birthday celebration here. I always do a couple of big dinners, uh, tastings around my birthday the first week in March. And uh, you know you're going to get a little extra when you come to one of our high-end tastings the first week in March. And the celebration was long and was hard and was great. And Friday night, we took down several wines from Domaine Loire and some very good friends on hand. So you knew there was going to be some other additional bottles opened up uh, in, in, in addition to the wines that we had slated to go down for the tasting. Well, we had 13-year-old whites. We had 42-year-old reds. Hey, what a coincidence. I'm 42. Well, I always like to drink a few 69s. That was my birth year, and it just so happens a great vintage in Burgundy. And I bought a case of... Loire Savigny Lavon, just a village wine, direct from uh, Loire two years ago in anticipation of my 40th birthday. And every single bottle out of that case has been outstanding. I've now drank 10 bottles of that 69 and a simple village wine. Just amazing how well Burgundy's age. And even the white. We started out with the 1998 Bourgogne Chardonnay from Loire, 13 years old, Bourgogne Chardonnay. Are you kidding me? The wine's beautiful. Drinking beautifully, has uh, this lovely uh, ripe fruit still showing in the nose here, and uh, lemon candied citrus, some stony minerality showing, a hint of oak spice. You know, this wine could have Chasson Montrachet Premier Cru. It could have some Grand Cru stuff in it that didn't make the cut in one of Loire's wines. She really is a perfectionist, making some of the greatest wines in Burgundy, and then holding on to them until she feels like they're ready to drink and releasing them. So, uh, you know, uh, this is not... Most people do not hold back their wine for any length of time today. You know, the Lure, well, Loire's wines are very expensive, so she can afford to hold on a lot more than other people. But even at $1,000, $1,500 a bottle like the 78 Clos Rougeau, you'll still pay more than that for the current release of a similar wine from Domaine Romanicanti, which is, by the way, co-owned by Lulu Biz Loire. So um, she had a little bit of a fight, unfortunately. And uh, 1992, they kicked her out in terms of running it, but uh, she has been focusing on her domain wine since then, which she began in 1998 when she bought a few properties. And uh, they've been a negotiant for over 150 years in Burgundy and one of the largest caches of wines, about 3 million bottles in the cellars at Loire. All right, well, next up we had the 2004 Chasson Montrachet Morgeau. And this wine, I told people, on the, just keep this wine on the table. It is going to continue to get better the entire night as it did really showing some lovely fruit by the end of the night. It was a little bit closed uh, when we first opened it up, but by the end, really starting to sing some lovely toasty matchstick sulfur note kind of blowing off and uh, showing some lovely uh, candied lemon and pear and apple fruit and uh, some lovely minerality, a long finish with this wine. Um, those were the only two whites that we had, but uh, the 2007 Red Bon Romane, um, Premier Cru, outstanding, lovely spice in these 2007s, a lovely savory character to a lot of them. Maybe not going to be a real long-lived vintage for reds, but the better ones I think may surprise you because of the acidity in these wines. Uh, very nice and uh, really nuanced too. Uh, the uh, Bon Romane from uh, Loire, Premier Cru Eau Genevieres. And then, uh, well, we had two, two 2000 reds first. Uh, the Volnay Premier Cru Santino and the Bon Marquinet. Unfortunately, the bone was, uh, well, had a little ethyl acetate problem. You know, whenever you smell a wine, you get that nail polish smell in there. That's a flaw in the wine. And unfortunately, uh, we had a bad bottle of Loire, which is tough to get credit for wines like that. I always tell people, if you get a bad bottle, bring it back to me. I can get credit for it. Don't bring back Loire. I can't get credit for it. Actually, my trivia would probably give me credit for it, but still very tough with Burgundies and older wines like this. You know, a couple of these wines actually came to me leaking. You know, the wine of the night... Uh, the 1978 uh, Volnay Santino, unfortunately, was leaking and a little short fill. But one of the wines of the night, absolutely fabulous. And uh, the wine of the night was the 78 Clos Rougeau, though, which was expected. 78, a great, a classic old vintage in Burgundy. This wine had this lovely cherry and raspberry fruit to it, this uh, silky, velvety texture on the tongue, and still wonderful freshness and exotic spice. The 88 Clos Rougeau, hmm, maybe still a little bit tannic. I don't know if these 88s are ever going to come around. The same thing with the 88 Domaine Romanicanti wines, which we had two years ago, my 40th birthday party. We had uh, 88 Romanicanti, 88 Latache, 88 Romani St. Pavant. All the wines still showing a lot of tannin. 
And uh, I, like I said, I don't know if these 88 vintage is ever going to come around, but some of the wines very highly touted, very highly rated. So uh, if you got them, I would say hang on to your 88s in anticipation of that tannin mellowing out a little bit. But uh, still some nice fruit to these wines. So I think you still have a couple years. Hey, 69 Sabino Labon, as I mentioned before, one of the great 69s that I've had for a village wine. And hey, we had a few other 69s. I bought a mixed case of Romois and A. We had the Gevray Chambertin Closing Jacques, which was pretty good, but a lot of people liked it a lot better. This is one of the greatest premier crews in Gevray Chambertin and Clos de Jacques, but Romois and A, maybe not at the same level as Loire in terms of you know, a negotiant, because both of these producers bought the grapes for these wines, these old ones. They didn't grow them. You know, it wasn't until 1988 that Loire started her uh, her domain program. And hey, what's this Kistler doing up there? Well, you know, there's someone's, you can just feel the love in the room, man. Someone's going to open up something great. The 2000 Kistler Vineyard, no mistaking this wine for a California Pinot Noir. Much bigger in size, much more alcoholic. And then, hey, you know, the doctor was in, Gary... And he had to open up a bottle of Piedmont wine, the 2001 Star Dairy from La Spinetta out of Magnum. Maybe the wine of the night, man. This wine had got some just exotic floral bouquet with lovely kind of red licorice spice and a, a host of ripe red cherry, raspberry kind of liqueur fruit. Uh, still very big and needs some time. This 01 vintage, a classic vintage in the Piedmont. Well, that's what I had to drink at the Loire tasting, folks.